Seven-time Super Bowl champ, passed for almost 90,000 yards. Tom Brady's going to join us live right now. The reason I know Tom's the greatest quarterback ever isn't all those stats. Here's how I know you're the greatest quarterback ever. Because Mike Vrabel is the size of a minivan, and you threw 10 touchdown passes to a linebacker. So when I saw that the other day, I went, Mike Vrabel owes you a steak and a beer. You put him on the map, Tom. That's how I know you're the greatest. You don't need to blow his head up any more than it already <laughs> is. Uh, he's had – he went – first of all, he went to Ohio State, so he already feels really good about himself there. And the fact that you bring that up, he still tries to run tight end routes and he ends up – he was actually really good at it. He was very twitchy, had a really good explosiveness, and just how he got to the quarterback so well, he found his way to the back of the end zone quite a few times. So I love being his teammate. Yeah, he's a great coach as well. So I was a little surprised. Uh, when you get emotional, I've watched you two or three times in your career get emotional. I get emotional watching you get emotional. And, uh, you know, you talked about yeah. your dad or your kid. So on the beach, um, it was authentic. It was real. You're emotional. I, I'm like, yeah, Tom's done. But I was surprised a little. Yeah. About the cynicism on the Internet. He's coming back. So I just got to put it out there. Right. Is there one percent chance you could get talked back into playing? I, I think for me, you know, I, I know in my heart uh, how I feel. And, you know, I put it out on the field for 23 years and I'm super proud of, you know, what's been accomplished. And, um, you know, I just wanted to keep last week really short and sweet. And I felt like I've. I've given a lot. I've gained a lot. Um, I've learned a lot. And, you know, life is about, you know, exciting things ahead, too. So I think when one thing closes, like football has for me for, you know, 32 years of my life. And, you know, I look forward to what's ahead. There's new chapters um, and there's new exciting things and there's new growth. There's new opportunities. And uh, I'm really excited for what's ahead. So, you know, I've loved my time at football. It's absolutely uh an incredible love in my life. And it's hard to make decisions like that, but it's certainly the right time. Tom, um, you set two NFL records in your final year, so you can still play. You'll be able to spin that football in 10 years. I don't care if you're in a winery at a beach, you'll be able to spin it. That That's not the issue. The issue is at some point you were either with your kids in a car by yourself and you made this decision if i could be be nosy here when was the moment where were you when you made the decision i think the finality of it was was last just you know last week so you know you always kind of i think the, the future is very hard to predict for all of us i mean nothing's really guaranteed but i think you just take it day by day and you know as my friend always tells me the future happens a day at a time and, um, but I'm super excited. I really am. I think there's a lot of great things ahead and I think you need to create space for those things too. And, you know, uh, when one thing ends naturally, other opportunities present themselves. And, you know, I don't try to make predictions and sometimes I'm really good with certainty. And I think in this case, I'm good with a little bit of uncertainty, even though I have some great opportunities in my professional life ahead. Um, and I'm really excited about those things. You know, at the same time, you got to create space for those things as well. So I, I want to talk about that. You you gave to the game emotionally and physically. Um, I mean, I, I read stories. You didn't drink a beer during the season. I'm like, man, I think I'm committed. That's next level stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I like a pint now and there, Tommy. I got to be honest with you. So. <laughs> um, my wife's from Michigan. You're a Michigan guy. They like their pints too. I know that. So I, I got to ask you, Yeah. is there, um, is there a thought in your head that, man, I gave a lot. I need to exhale. I, I got to give this thing some space here. Is, is that like time? I'm, I'm talking 15 months. I'm talking 18 months. Yeah. I think for me, absolutely. And even, you know, decompression is important. You know, I, I, you're on this kind of really crazy treadmill slash hamster wheel for a long time, loving the moment, loving the journey. At the same time, you know, there's a, there's a, a, it's a daily fight. You know, you wake up every day, just like you do. And I have appreciation for so many people that are so committed every day to showing up, to put their max effort into their life and their career. And I think for me, I want to be great at what I do. And even, you know, talking even last week with the people at Fox sports, you know, and, and the leadership there allowing me to start you know, my Fox opportunity in, in the fall of 2024 is something that's great for me. So take some time to really learn, 
become great at what I want to do, become great at, um, you know, thinking about the opportunity and making sure I don't rush into anything. And I, I, I think when people really bet on me, I think one thing about my career, whether it was when I was drafted by the Patriots or signing for agency with the Bucks, I wanted to be, you know, fully committed. And I, I never wanted to let people down. I think my biggest motivator was that. So, you know, even in the future, I want to be great at what I do. And that always takes some time and strategizing and, and learning and growing and evolving. And I have so many people to rely on that um, can support me in that growth too. So it's going to be a good, great opportunity for me to take some time to really uh, certainly become at my Fox broadcasting job, which I'm really looking forward to, but also catching up on other parts of my life that uh, need some, need some time and energy. So um, you're not a rear view mirror guy, but when I look at the Tampa experience, I've watched my entire career, 30 years, Tom, NBA, NFL, baseball, guys move, stars, and it doesn't work. In fact, it doesn't work about 70% of the time. In that first year in Tampa, did you have a moment where you thought, oh, crap, this is, this, is, this is hard. Was there ever a moment that you thought, maybe it was Thursday against the Bears, <laughs> that you thought it wasn't going to work? <laughs> that was hard. <laughs> that that was this one. <laughs> I, uh, it was, and you know what? It should be hard because let me tell you, the NFL is hard and the competitive nature of sports is hard. And there's nothing that you're going to experience in life that is worth attaining. That's not hard and has its challenges. And I think what we accomplished in Tampa when I was there was amazing part of my football journey. And I couldn't have done it without the people there that were fully embracing of what I brought. And I think that's why I chose that from the Glazers to Jason Light to the the coaches and and ba and the, all the all my teammates you know they op- they welcomed me with open arms and i think that was that's part of you know i think if you really want to get to me appeal to my heart and say we trust you tom we you know come in and do what you do and i think you're going to get the best version of me when you do that because again there's a naturally part of me that's very um you know self-motivated to always prove myself to myself that i don't want to let people down but also to prove to them hey you bet on the right person and um you know, you got to wake up out of day and I kind of jump out of bed. Okay. What do I got to accomplish today? And I love doing that for people that believe in me. So I, Tampa was that experience. The Patriots were obviously that experience for me for a long period of time. And I had an amazing football journey and now it's time to be great at other things. You were doubted early. I can't tell you how many times I take a phone call, a system quarterback. I'm like, he is the system. He's not a system. So you were doubted early, <laughs> and you were championed late. What was more fun, the GOAT or the journey? Ooh. So I always deal with people that doubt me better um, <laughs> in the sense that the competition. You know, I love when they give me a little more fuel for the fire. Not that I need it, but it just it draws a little. And I think there's a good emotion in sport, too, which anger. And you've seen some of the you know, great players that I always looked up to, Michael Jordan, Tiger Woods, uh, Kobe Bryant, um, Jerry West. There's a there's an anger when you play that is a really motivating factor too because it sparks an action. You know, anger motivates you to, you know, wake up sometimes and you dig deep. And I love digging deep because I learn a lot about myself. And I think when we dig deep and people push us further than places we want to go, you know, we can reach places that no people have ever been. And, um, you know, my football crew is just that. And again, I think now and I look back, there's a lot of reasons why there's a lot of from the day that I started the Patriots, you know, through my last game, there was a lot of lessons I learned along the way. And a lot of people I got to experience life with and the journeys of life, which have set up me, hopefully with, you know, and again, not that anything's promised, but a lot of great years ahead. And I'm looking forward to it. And, um, there's a lot of great things to accomplish with a lot of great people and certainly me spending time with my family and, and giving them all that I can do in the meantime, before I, you know, leap back into something else is a great opportunity for me to connect with, you know, things that are really my priority. So there's a lot of great things ahead and obviously moving to the media side, like you have, you've done an amazing job and uh, I can learn from everyone out there. So I just thank you and all the other people out there who have been so great to me and supportive of my journey. I really appreciate it. You know, Tom, you, um, uh, the Tom versus time, uh, the young man who put that together is a friend. And I thought it was fascinating because, you know, by and large, we don't get that look right. And, uh, or if we do, the players already retired, like Michael Jordan's doc, I got a doc with you and you're playing and you're on that film. And this, this is going to sound goofy, 
but you were always looking at others. Have you ever just sat down? You could turn on the Fox or the NFL Network, one of your games is on, or have you looked at film? Have you ever watched film of you, and what do you interpret? What do you see when you watch you? Oh. Well, I think the torture of that is, I think I see all the flaws, to be honest. I don't see, like, I probably look at a lot of other people going, wow, look at how amazing they are and how incredible they performed under pressure. And, um, you know, I think for me, from my own perspective, I don't see myself that way. I see, God, what could I have done? But, oh, that throw sucked. Oh, that was the wrong read. Oh, why did I call that play? Oh, you know. And I think that's the agonizing part about being an athlete. And I think that's part of why you continue to reach and dig deep because you only see the flaws and you want to make those flaws better. And you realize that you're never finished products and you want to improve and you want to learn, you meet people and you grow from those experiences. So I don't know how many perfect broadcasts you perform, but there's probably not many perfect games I've performed very few over the course of probably almost 400. And, um, you know, I always strive to be a little bit better and people around me push me to be, the best I could be. And I think so much of that enjoyment and fulfillment is in the journey of that experience and not necessarily, oh, I got there that one time or I got there 10 times. You know, it's the pursuit of that, the practice, the meetings, all those things are really what I enjoyed on this journey, not just the outcome of a game. I can assure you, I have never had a perfect broadcast. You can ask my audience, Tom. I've never had, I'm not sure I've had a perfect segment, uh, <laughs> depending on uh, who you ask. Yeah. I can't wait. For you to be part of us, uh, I know you're very, very busy, and um, I just appreciate you giving us 10, 15 minutes today. Thank you so much. Yeah, happy to do it, and have a great Super Bowl week. Enjoy it, and, uh, you know, it's a great week of in American sports, and to see these two teams go at it, I'll be super excited. So I wish I was playing. We didn't get there this year, unfortunately, but the teams that did there deserved it, and uh, to see Patrick and Jalen lead their teams is is amazing. It'll be a fun week for the Super Bowl, and love it that it's on Fox, too, and Greg and Kevin calling it. So I'll be watching probably more 50% watching the game and 50% listening to those two <laughs> and uh, hearing the amazing job that they're going to do along with the whole Fox Sports crew. It all kicks off Super Bowl Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern on Fox. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.